This is a huge increase, and you just wonder if it's going to act as a break on the recovery. Well, Kelly, it sure could. I mean, the good news is, at least prior to the pandemic, uh, consumer balance sheets and income statement, statements, for that matter, were in particularly strong shape. We had seen wage increases occurring at a regular basis. Uh, debt had been pared down to levels last seen a generation ago. The service costs in those debt levels because of low interest rates are at multi-generational lows. So as a consequence of that, uh, we've seen a buffer in place, of course, that's only been exaggerated by the government's largesse here by way of the stimulus checks. And so we saw a spike in the savings rate here just in the last couple of weeks, up to 33 percent, which is like anything we've seen even greater than that, which we saw in the aftermath of World War II. So hopefully there is some powder dry that can be available as funding to support those indebted levels as a consequence of it that leaves consumption uh, largely uh, to continue to prime economic activity. But uh, if it should continue to mount by way of the coronavirus spread continuing on for a considerable period of time, it would become increasingly worrisome to what's needed to restart the economy, which is, of course, consumer spending. Yeah, no, absolutely. Terry, I'll bring you in with kind of the same question. And also uh, just looking at the markets the last couple of sessions, were the kind of gains off of the lows a one time phenomenon? And do you think that the rally uh, looks very different from here on out? Yeah, thanks, Kelly. I mean, I think the biggest question, I don't think, the, the biggest question that we have received recently from our own clients is, why is the market doing so well with the data being so disastrous in the economy? And so I think that that's reflective of the fact that we've just had such a big and sharp bounce back from the lows. And in our view, you know, risk matters, defense matters, discipline matters. And so just chasing returns because the Fed said, you know, we're going to buy everything. It doesn't mean be a zombie and buy everything. It means pay attention, have discipline, and look at risk as well as return. And so make sure that you're aware that there can be a lot of volatility throughout the summer as this um, market got a little bit ahead of itself more recently. It's interesting, Terry, because one of your investment calls is actually to buy high-yield debt, you know, the very debt that companies are issuing to get through this that we're worried could hang, be a hangover on the whole economy. But why does that look attractive? Because it does offer kind of relatively better yields right now. Right. So, yeah, let me be careful about how I say this. So buy high yield corporate bonds over small cap stocks. So companies that are growing quickly that need to borrow money, you know, not to excess like we, like uh, Mark was just mentioning, but that need to borrow in order to grow can be high yield corporate bond companies or issuers of high yield corporate bonds versus small stocks. If you're looking at the risk return and you want exposure to that and you're not trying to be super timing, high yield corporate bonds over small stocks. Similarly, emerging market debt over emerging market equities, preferred stocks over financial stocks. So again, always being conscious of the risk that's involved. We hate drawdowns. We hate losing money. Um, we want to earn a nice return like everyone else. But I think sometimes we can forget about the risk that's involved. Yeah. And the kind of comparative places to look for that return. Mark, let me turn back to you with a question about the coronavirus specifically. Are we going to have to wait for the case count to stop rising or to kind of start cresting in some of these states, especially the southern states, before the market can find its legs again? I don't know that it'll have to come to that, Kelly. I mean, obviously, the market moved in advance of the peak in cases across the United States in the aggregate. So I think what we want to see is, of course, that the number of new cases arrests, at least by way of the rate of change of them, not necessarily that they have to peak and go down. In fact, I think it was pretty widely expected that as these states reopen, Georgia, of course, the first one to do so, that we were likely to see some spread of new cases, as long as it doesn't, though, become uncontrollable, either by way of an acceleration in the cases uh, and so egregiously high as the concern of those that might worry about a renewed lockdown of these states, but as well that which doesn't hopefully by way of fatality or before that morbidity overwhelm the healthcare system again, which is far away from where we are, at least at the moment. And so I think any kind of news that shows that the number of new cases while growing isn't set to overwhelm the healthcare system, I think the market will ultimately get its legs again concurrent to seeing economic activity once again percolating back to life as uh, we're seeing not only domestic conditions improve, but the, the global economy as well.